Now, my guest for today is a veteran who fought during the Second World War on behalf of the then colonial masters, the British. Again, he happens to be the only surviving ex-serviceman who was involved in the famous 28th February 1948 Christianburg Castle Road shooting incident. Uh, my guest for today is ex-private Ashite Hammond. Hello, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank your time. Thank you so much, too. It's an honor. I'm glad. Thank I'm you. glad I'm back again with <laughs> broadcasting. Okay, so uh, you turned 95 years exactly, this year. Exactly, about a week ago. Uh, on the 10th of May, okay. this month, 95. And how does it feel to be 95? What are the challenges and well, the advantages I've also? I've never celebrated my birthday before. Okay. Because from the inception of birthdays, mm -hmm. the first birthday, a man was hanged mm -hmm. in Pharaoh's time. The second one was King John the, uh, this thing, John the Baptist, you remember. Mm -hmm. They killed him. They cut his head off because of setting his face. I think you know all. Mm -hmm. So I decided not at all to celebrate. I just prayed to the Almighty God to grant me more life and then yes but to celebrate no because when jesus came jesus didn't celebrate his birthday so there's no way i am a real christian okay and um, but uh, i didn't see anything in the bible that showed that jesus christ celebrated, celebrated his, birthday. his birthday so i don't do that so um, he is my teacher okay 95 years old what, what are the challenges that come with your age tell us you see, I told you, it is the heart that actually propels you in life. When anybody uh, offends you, it is always good to forgive. Because even in the Bible, Jesus said, when somebody slaps you, how many times? I read it in the Bible, then he said seven times. It, did, it doesn't mean that you are, uh, uh, excuse me, you are a fool, you are a lunatic. But that means it, it, it was a proverbial word, forgive, that's all, and bring peace. Mm -hmm. I, I like peace, always. And despite the fact that I fought in the war, after the war, I had a different view about life completely. So whoever wants to harm somebody is not my friend. I don't like even to harm an animal. Because of that, if you give me a knife to kill a, a, a fowl, I won't do it. Because the of what you experienced? Because of the experience I passed through. Okay, so in, what, 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 are, what are the challenges also? You know, we haven't been 95, I mean, got into where you are. Yes. What, what are the challenges there are that lot, come with A lot, age? battalion, legion of problems. The problems keep on coming in legions, but the way you solve it, when it comes, go on your knees and pray to the Almighty God. Because we haven't got the power. He has got the power. And he feels for us. He said in the Bible that those that are, uh, they are weak, everything is on their shoulder. It is too much for them. Come to me. I will solve it for you. It's a very, it was a very good saying. So always when there is a problem crops up, the best thing to do is to go on your knees and pray. I believe fervently in Jesus Christ. I have faith and confidence in him. Eventually he will solve the problem for you. Thank you so much, uh, ex Ashete Hammond. Yeah. Now let's begin your World War II diaries. Uh, you actually um, fought in that war yeah. at the age of 16. Yeah. Uh, did you join because the, you wanted to, to join we to or you were forced? At the age of 18. At the age of 18, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Were you forced into the war or it was something that you wanted to do all along? Pardon? I'm asking that, did you join the war per your own evolution? Yes. We or were, you were forced thank into Thank you it? very much for your question. When I was at the senior school, also Presbyterian senior school, whenever I saw these soldiers always, they inspire me. 
Okay. So I decided that immediately I conclude my education, I will join the army. I finished 1942. Then 43, I joined the army. And you know where the police headquarters is situated now? It was our camp. I went through my technical training. There was no this thing, those days, that uh, the area, the area called this thing, I've forgotten the name. Uh, you know, I went through all my technical training with flying colors. Okay. After the training, 43, I was posted to Takradi, third advanced base workshop. And our officer commanding, OC, was Major Brunner. The two IC, the second in command, was Captain Chipling. Then we had other officers, Lieutenant Booth, Lieutenant Richardson, and then later on, Lieutenant Day also came. Those days, there was an instruction order from General Headquarters, Sachimata. Ordinary drivers should not, you know, drive the officers. But those who have gone on the training, special training, to, to drive the officer. So I was selected at the unit, I was selected to drive the officer. Okay. So, so I was the one driving the commanding officer. Okay. Uh -huh. So at what point did you then, leave um, the Gold Coast to Burma? The, good. Then one day, Major Brunner told me that the commander of the all the Gold Coast workshops, Kennedy Lady, would come. And I'll go to all the mining areas with him. A couple of days later, he came. He turned up. Then we started, we embarked on our journey to Prisia, Bogoso, Obuase, Takwa, all the mining areas. Then, when we concluded, he told me we'll go to Axim at the fort. And you know, because I was a mechanical man, the vehicle had a technical hitch on the way. Some part, there was 40 area in the carburetor and other side. I managed to repair all. And those days, you know, vehicles were so few, not like today. So sometimes it's difficult before once you see a vehicle will pass. Hours on end. So I managed to repair this vehicle. On the way to Axim also, at a bushy area, the vehicle developed another fault. Down. Again, I managed to repair it. And Kenny Lighting was extremely happy. The way and manner I managed to repair this thing. Else we would have, uh, you know, stranded on the way. After that, we headed towards Axim. And we, when we arrived at the fort, we slept there. The following day, we moved to our base at Takradi. When we arrived, Colonel Leiden was so happy with me, he told Major Brunner, our commanding officer, that Hammond actually did exceedingly well. So I want you to promote him. Okay. Being the Colonel, in charge of all the workshops, he asked our major to promote me. But I was extremely surprised. Instead of my promotion, I was drafted to go to India and Burma to fight in the <laughs> war. Instead, I was shocked. Well, the military rule is that obey before complain. complain. So I had nothing to say. Not well, to comply. Ten of us were drafted from the unit mm. to go to the war. Myself, Joseph Hammond, E.B. Okine, I have a retentive memory, so I remember <laughs> all of them. E e Joseph Hammond, E.B. Okine, Granton. Then uh, 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 Krenzel, Amun, Anoba. Then uh, 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 Nefi, E.B. Mensa, Nunu, and Lomote. These ten people who were there. So we all went into uh, to the harbor, Takradi. Mm. We saw a very huge ship with two funnels. 
HMS Sakasia. And the troops on board, they were about 2,500 to approximately 3,000. Well, we also joined from Takradi, November 1943. Two days later, we started, we the sailed same. to Sierra Leone. Two days, the third day we arrived in Sierra Leone. They had a natural harbor. So we were there, we went on a sketching, and it's a hilly place, free town, mm -hmm. always rain. The following day, when we returned to the ship, the following morning, when we woke under, from under the deck, we saw so many ships, we were surprised. We didn't actually, we didn't actually know where the ships came from. But we went there, say alone, with only one ship, the German Satasha. So an hour later, later, I saw a submarine leaving the natural harbor. Then about 30 minutes later, all the ships started blowing their siren. Then the whole ship started. Plenty of ships, normally we call it Amada. This time we started, together with all. So the ships actually left, we left Sri Alone with 21 ships. Okay. We didn't know where the ships came from. There were troops, soldiers on, on board. We continued. Were they also Africans or? Yeah, some Europeans okay. and Africans, we, we don't know. We continued, the, and during the war, we had two uh, planes, military planes. We had street fire fighters and then hurricane fighters, which I know very well. Occasionally, they flew over the convoy, protecting our convoy. On the right hand side, there was two destroyers, which I know very well. And then at the extreme end, cruiser, very big battleship, the same thing on the left hand side. We continue, but intermittently, some of these planes would fly over the convoy to protect it. And then they change course. Boom, 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 all the ships, the 21 ships, then we change course. We continue like that. So one day, we ask the officers, why can't we go straight, <laughs> but rather zigzag course? Mm. They say, eh, the German submarines, they run very fast. Mm. And if we are not careful, and the overtakers, they will settle down and destroy all our ships with their torpedoes. You see, their submarines will destroy all of them. Oh, that was why we have been going this accord. We continue like that. When they explained, we were satisfied. So we continue until we reach Gibraltar, being a British base. All the 21 ships, the following morning, at dawn, all the, tw the 20 ships vanished. Why was it so? We didn't know where we went. They came in at Sierra Leone, unexpectedly, we didn't know. The same thing, they vanished into thin air at uh, this place, uh, Gibraltar. Gibraltar. So it left our ship alone. So we entered into the Mediterranean Sea. We sailed until we arrived at Egypt, a port called Port Said. And this Port Said, from Port Said to Port Suez, 100 miles, the Suez Canal. Mm. We entered the Suez Canal, sailed. At the end of the day, the ship stopped. The following morning, all our troops on board, because you know we, we started from uh, Ghana for quite a long time, so we all went into a landing craft, brought all of us to the seaside, the beach. We engaged in sports, some running, others boxing, so many uh, uh, disciplines, you know, the sports. From 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the evening, all of us went back into our landing craft. We went back into the, our ship, HMS Sekasia. 
we continue our journey from Suez Canal until we enter the Red Sea. The Red Sea is a different thing. It's quite like a river. And many people always think that when they say Red Sea, the sea is red. It is not. It What's is the same. color? It is the same color. Okay. Why? I will tell you why they mention the Red, red sea. sea. You know, during the olden days, during Pharaoh's time, the Egyptians, when the uh, Moses free the Israelites, the Egyptians, to King Pharaoh, troops chased the Israelis to capture them again. But at the beach side, seaside, they were trapped. So Moses raised his staff and the sea parted into two. I think we all know this history. So after the Israelis left, the, 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 the Egyptian troops, they came, when they arrived at this same area, the sea area, the sea covered all of them. There were casualties and death because of bloodshed. Casualties and death is a red sea. Red sea. This is why they call it the red sea. But the color I was there is the same like the sea. But uh, uh, the main sea is rough mm. with waves. But the, the first the color, no, is that not area red. is calm like a river. Okay, so ex private Ashite Hammond, yes. let's take a quick break. When yeah. we come back, we'll now uh, begin with Burma itself. What really happened? Welcome back. You're watching Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. On Legends of Our Time, we celebrate our heroes. And of course, today we have, we're have having a discussion with one such legend, and his name is ex-private Ashite Hammond. Okay. So, ex-private, now take us to Burma. Yeah. What really happened at Burma in terms yes. of the war and your experiences? Thank you. Share with us. Uh, from... Um, the first canal, we sailed through to Port Aden. Then, three days later, fill our water and everything. Then we enter into the Indian Ocean. We travel about five days. The sixth day, we arrive in Bombay. Bombay, the following day, a huge officer came with hairs all over the body and the face. Not doing that, that about six feet five. That officer. Not me, he was going to be our brigade commander during the war in Burma, called Brigadier E. W. Weston. Now, he came, we assembled, he assembled all the troops on board. He advised us, he welcomed us. When, after, when he left, few hours later, as, uh, uh, ambulances, 12 ambulances with uh, driven by Indian military guards with two officers, one captain and one lieutenant, to evacuate sick people from on board. Some of our people fell sick on board the ship, so to evacuate them to hospital. Well, few years from the ship, there was a train station there. So we went there, six o'clock sharp, and then we had our meals. We were asked to board the, 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 the train. Six o'clock, we started the journey. From six in the morning, we traveled, and then there was a big mountain. That was the first time I traveled on the, the, the a tunnel. A tunnel. When we came out, we continued our journey. Till eight o'clock in the night, approximately about six, between six to eight hundred miles, when the train stopped, finally. There were guides to escort us. It was big dark, and the place was called uh, a, a den. Uh, you know, about five miles to Pula City. So we had to walk with our guides. Because when you, you are not careful and you, you, you leave the, the troops and you get lost, nobody will see you again. Because we were strangers. Mm. But the guides were very careful, uh, escorted us. Two miles. So what we normal, normally do, when you want to rest, you have to, you have to walk very fast in front of the soldier. Mm -hmm. Sit down. And rest. Rest. When they come up, then you Continue. get up. So we walk about two miles. 
Then we had, at the end of the two months, we had somebody shouting. There was a camp. Somebody shouting, where are the Gogos? Where are we? We are all here. Not doing that, these two people, uh, Sergeant Okai and Corporal Colley, they were our instructors. So we were there. And then our, where our camp was called Kumase Company. Okay. But later on, we learned that there were other troops within the vicinity. The Nigerian, their company also, like the, my house to the Osu police station, the distance, it's called Shoto, Shoko, Shokoto Company. Sokoto. Uh, okay. Sokoto Company, the Nigeria. We are own Kumasi, they, they are own Sokoto Company. And then Sierra Leone and Gambian troops, the same distance, they also had their camp. It was called Battles Company. Normally we come to play football. We had our football park there. We, they all converge at our football club. We play, you see, against each other. Then we play our football. Sometimes we come to the world training. We call it maneuvers and so forth. They come, the assault course, it was difficult. Any time that there was an assault course, the world training, they train the team so fearful that so that when you, you go into the war, you will fear the same. And there was a long rope like this, tight. And then the bat, you will cross your leg, crossing very far. And there was a, a very big trench with barbed wires, broken bottles, everything in it. So when you look, you are tired mm. and you look inside. Mm -hmm. You will advise yourself. <laughs> and that's a continue. Because when you drop into the barbed wire yeah. and the broken glasses, you are finished. Yeah. So you try sweating, but you do it. At the end, immediately you learn the, another thing again to do. We pass on the tarpaulin and so forth. We had rigorous training there. Any time that they trained, there was ambulance standing by. If immediately somebody dies, the ambulance will convey him to the cemetery. Mm. But when you are seriously wounded, then you hospital. end up at the hospital. It continued like that for just a few, uh, few months. Then it came to an end. We had to go to another training again. By that, those days, India, it was part of India. Now it's Bangladesh. Mm. We travel to Calcutta, to that place. It's called uh, Kulna. But down south, few miles, there was Chittagong. These two places, but I was trained in Kulna. Cool. It's near Dakar, their capital. Now, we had a rigorous training there also. We were there after our training. We had two divisions from West Africa. We had 81st Division and uh, a divisional commander was General Wolner. Mm. And we were the 82nd Division. The 81st, our, our troops are still using the insignia. You see a spider here on their shoulder. It, it's 81st Division. And then two cross here on the yellow part, it's 82nd Division. And our divisional commander was General Stockwell. Then we had uh, our brigade commander, the man that I said came to Bombay and welcomed us, a few six feet five with hairs all over the body, our brigade commander. So when did the war itself start for you and uh, what were the, what, what were actually the, the war started 42 mm. because the 81st division went in first. They, they, they went there earlier, they had their training earlier and then they went in first because Actually, I must be frank with you, the war started from India. The Japanese conquered all the islands around Burma. And Burma being the main British base with their troops, everything, the Japanese invaded the place. Chased the British house together with their troops to India. They followed them. Then when they crossed the borders, they seized some of the town there at the border between India and Burma, they ceased. So when our troops came, 42, 
81st Division, we realize that if we don't push them out into Burma, the war will be one in India and one in Burma. Burma. So we decided we established our bridgehead, all our supplies there. We fought them. It was a ferocious fight. Wow. Then we were able to push them through Chiringa, the border, into Burma. Hmm. They continued the fight in there, the first division. The arrangement was that they, they fight six months, they come back, we train them. We also will go in for six months. Then they come to rest in India, they go back. That was the arrangement. Hmm. So we train them, Burma town called Butidong. It's the second division, we trained them at Butidon. Then we took over the war. We continued to fight them until we arrived. There was a town, Arawadi, Arawadi River. So we said then the town was called Pakoko. When the Japanese realized that we were about to massacre them, they changed their mind, they went to the south. We followed them, and sometimes the fighting was so intense the fighting was so intense that we solicit the help of the second light battery mm. artillery to bombard their positions. Mm. The whole ground will be shaking. Mm. And our air force bombed them also. And sometimes they retaliate any time that this thing do also bombers. When they were fighting subsides a little, everybody did trenches. We were in our train because when you lie on the empty ground, snipers on the tree, they'll shoot you, they'll kill you. So the moment we arrived in over, we start digging our trenches mm. to protect ourselves. For, 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 to, as a shield for you. Okay. So we can take our, our break at this point and then we'll continue. Yeah. So, ex-private Ashite Hammond, you know, we've heard a lot about uh, war in terms of uh, even food. Yes. I mean, the, ab yeah, the ability true. to get food to eat it's on true. the war front that even, I mean, eggs, animals like snakes and yeah. others, I mean, on the battlefield. How true are those stories? The fox and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we fought these people. Uh, the Japanese, and sometimes the most fearful thing is when somebody is killed and nobody saw the person, sometimes you see the dead body floating on the water, the Arawadi water, dead bodies float on it, but the same water, no water in the world, is the one we drink. We, we drink. So our water bottle, they put chemical like uh, salt, we could not drink it, you just gather and put it off. Push, push, push it. Now we continue to do it and always we carry plenty of socks because when we cross the river like that, we continue fighting for three or four days and the same socks and the water in your shoes. So we carry plenty of socks. Immediately fighting subside, you lose your shoes. One time, that bad water, you wash your feet one time, one time, you put another sock. Very stinky. You throw it away. Wear another one, another sock. Release it. Because the moment the whistle goes, you have to move. You have to move. You have to move. Mm -hmm. And when one thing, when your brother is sitting with you, converting or eating, even, and the whistle goes, and straight away there was a bullet, yeah, pow, shot and killed him. You look at him. You move on. You have no right to whip. Or otherwise, you demoralize the other soldiers. You don't even bury him. You don't think of that. It's not your business. It's for the Red Cross, the ambulance people. When we were fighting, then they collect the wounded, they treat them, and the dead ones, they bury them. Sometimes about 50 people in one hole. We put a, this thing, a lime, lime. We call it kalo, lime. We cover them, pray and then cover all of them. No time, we move. Well, was there a point that you got yourself hit? Were you hit by a stray bullet or something? No, what happened? Me and my eye, there was trouble. When we, we uh, I, I mentioned Pakoku, then 
We sent the Japanese to a river side. We fought alongside of the river. So we a broad terrain, many people, sections. Signal regiment fought at the Atia, the seaside. We fought near the Arawadi River to Rangoon, the capital. Now, we crossed uh, Mabu, the town, the river town. And we used rubber dinghies, you know, six people in it. And when we, we crossed the river, but they made a mistake. The six men, instead of maneuvering quickly to land, they delayed. So they realized that they were drifting to enemy territory. Mm. And when the enemies, they captured them, if your mother don't burn you at all, I think you thank your God. The treatment that you receive, because we always swore. When our unit, a battalion is 1,000 men, and when uh, they capture you, you have to sacrifice for the whole troop. Because they will mention, you mention your number and then your unit. Finish. They will force you to tell them the strength of your soldiers and mm -hmm. their position. Yeah. If you do, you reveal. They will be there, they will pounce on them mm -hmm. and kill all of them. Mm -hmm. And kill all of them. Mm -hmm. So you have to so sacrifice. They will kill you, torture you. But you, it means you alone will save the thousand men. This, uh, the order, you see, in normality. And we continued the fighting until after the cross. We saw uh, our six men in the water going, watch them away. Like yes. that. All of them, because they are robbed in the capsize. Very pathetic. Our own brothers. I know one young man from Osu here. My place. It was part I, of it. I knew when we were young. I, then he died there. The river took them. From there, we continued the fighting. Sometimes the fighting was so intense and no food. And you see, until we rely on our biscuit and cornered beef, until plane we drop parachute, our food and ammunition for us. Sometimes we'll be in our trench. You have nowhere to urinate because if you are not careful and you raise yourself, this thing is there during the fighting. Uh, snipers on the on the tree in the trees they will shoot you and kill you. So we're, we're always careful. Even when going a footpath, all the trees, snakes also hang around. So always we carry matchet, our our cutlass is big, very big. The moment it shows you, you cut the head one time, <laughs> you kill it. And there were spies, uh, 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 this thing also in the tree, this is snipers. Very, very serious thing. We continue like that. Then we reach a point, a town called Kindongi. Then the officers, they realized that my eye was protruding, coming out from a socket, my eye. Ah, I was shocked myself. The man did left eye, coming out. They saw from the socket. So they saw it was serious. And two wounded people, there was a Piper plane, small plane, carryable, two, three people, or four. We, we went to India. They flew us to India, Madras, 35 General Hospital in India. Then we were there, but there was no well-equipped eye section there. So we were transferred there by ambulance train with other wounded soldiers. Kola, Vela, Bangalore, Kulhapo, and then Pune City. And from Pune City, 10 miles away, big hospital, as far back as the for the tree, there were six operation theaters oh. for whites, Indian troops, blacks, all miss. I was there when actually my, 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 my doctor was called Lieutenant Crockett. But the commanding officer of the whole thing, Colonel Hollingsworth, he was in charge of the whole big hospital, 40th military hospital. Then, actually, he mentioned in my original discharge book that a contaminated blood, that means somebody was shot, and I thought the person wounded. And wiped your eyes yes, with it. The wounded to hide the person under a bush for snipers not to kill him. 
when we found our safety place too. But normally when going we spread, you don't group. When you group and uh, a grenade or anything lands there, all of you will die. So one here, one here, one. We keep moving forward with our officers, you see. Then immediately this thing happened. They sent me to this thing, uh, 40 General Hospital. I was there. So Lieutenant Crocker said, contaminated blood. And the, 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 the disease was called palititis and crudotitis. Again. Palititis and crudotitis. Okay. It was written in my discharge book. You see, mm. my discharge book, a medical term, mm. a medical term of the disease. Mm. Yes. Mm. So finally they solved the problem for you. Yeah, yeah they, they cured me. And they gave me category C, which actually I would have gone back to the fighting area again in Burma but I was extremely lucky at that time immediately the war came to an end wow. in May 1945 mm -hmm. so that prevented me from going back to the war again so you had to come home and not immediately there were other troops too other wounded people came and joined us there from the war mm -hmm. then we, we went to Burma with HMS Akasha, you remember, the ship. Now, on our way back, HMS Royce, we used. And we were the first troops to arrive 1945 December in Gokos. We were the first troops. With three military bands, people marching, people, when you ever, when people ask you about Kujo or Mensa, you say, he couldn't make it, they would burst into tears. The place became like a, 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 a mochi. Mm. Many people weeping because when you are of your, yeah, your family member, we left lots so of So you know, them. how many people did we lose? One of my war? best friends called Francis. He, my dear, God knew he was going to die on the way in the ship. Why? He went, he was, he had the white cooks and the different their food with chicken and all these, uh, uh, so many food, you see. He will bring there, bring it to us to eat. So he had sumptuous food mm. in the gallery there. <laughs> yes, the European kitchen. Mm. He was the first among us to die oh, in so the war. Francis, my best friend, mm. he died there. Mm -hmm. Well. I also ended here, and then we will return to, when we arrived December 45, uh, at Takrade, mm. these people, Takrade, the governor of the Gokos was called Governor Alain Benz. When we arrived, Governor Alain Benz came, Arakan Barracks, Takrade, to congratulate us. When he reached me, I was so young, he patted my head, it's my son. Congratulations, you defended the British Empire and the Coco. How old were you then? Um, it was then 19, 21 years. You were 20 20, years, I was okay. 21. Then immediately, the, uh, the uh, 46, we were all discharged. Okay. We were asked, those who wanted to continue in the army, but because of our suffering, we didn't want to do it again. We all wanted to come to civil life. Mm. Okay, so we continue, we went home. Okay, uh, let's take another break and when we come back, we'll, we'll begin the discussion on your arrival. In arrival, Zibu. okay, thank you. Well, you're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC News and GTV. We'll take another break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Please don't go away. And so the program is Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. My name is Gifty AJ, and my guest for today is ex-private Ashite Hammond. He is a World War II veteran. Okay, so um, ex-Ashite Hammond, let's come to one of the highlights of your legacy, and that has to do with the 28th February 1948 Christianburg Castle Road shooting yes. incident. You were part of that team that yes. wanted to present a petition to the governor. Uh, tell us exactly what happened 
on that particular good. day because 46. you are currently the only survivor, yeah, yeah, survivor of that group. Very good. Tell us what you really see, happened uh, on 46, that day. We were promised heaven that when we return, they will give us pension, everything, increment, and everything. But from 46 to 48. They didn't do it. They neglected us. Some of our soldiers have been back in the street. Deplorable condition. So we decided that if you don't ask, they won't give you. When we came, our general secretary was uh, Tamaklo, but a grown-up man. Later on, his deputy was James Ousu. So he took over from him. Under this period, you know the Independence Square, there was a labor office under the trees. We planned that how to go about this. We write our petition, we send it to Governor Chrissy. Alan Ben's gone. Tira uh, Chrissy was there. So that fateful day, Sajajete was the one holding our petition, our leader. We embark on this uh, work from uh, Kwame Nkrumah Museum. Those days there was uh, uh, just an ordinary park. 24 February, independent. These uh, schools uh, go there to. So you know, much. for sports. Okay. But now it's Kwame Nkrumah Museum. We worked there 8.30. That's why we wanted to reach the castle before 12, the sun. We worked slowly, slowly, 210 of us. So we arranged a few vehicles that are, we moved. When we arrived at the crossroads, we saw an uneducated policeman. We called them James Poe. You see, James Poe means illiterate with their officer, British officer, Superintendent Embry, in charge. They said they won't allow us to go to the castle. We said, why? After all, we want to present our position to the governor to look into our deplorable condition. We spoke this man was highly impervious to reason. He didn't agree. Okay, we asked him, let us select 10 men go with Sajjan Jete to the castle. This man was still adamant. So we scaled down the number from 10 to 5. It still continued. We refused. Instead of negotiating with us, he asked, well, later on we learned that the sergeant's name was Tokosi. He asked him to shoot. He gave him the order three times. The man didn't bother at all. Koko said, why should he kill his brother? We just arrived from... No. He was highly peeped, highly annoyed. So he grabbed the gun. The first one that he shot was uh, Udati Lamte, at the front line. You know, that day, Atipu and uh, Sajadete, they were, during the bomber fighting, they were at the same unit. Okay. So they were friends. So this one, after shooting Ajete, uh, when he shot Udati Lamte, I saw a tipo. I was standing seven feet behind Sajan Jete. Then he moved forward. He said, oh, but he made it like this. Oh, but we are, on, we are on harm. We have no arms. Why should you kill? Then he shot him too. And the second person. That actually provoked Sajan Jete a lot. And he moved to grab him with the gun. Mm. If that bullet had missed Sajan Jete, it would have landed on me. Because you were behind him. I was standing him. behind him just seven feet. I saw when he raised the gun. But fortunately, God praying. wants me to live, <laughs> to, to preserve my life, to tell the nation actually what, what happened. What really happened. So, Sajajete, boo 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 he fell down. Then I saw all of them dead before my eyes. Oh! That what happened to the rest of the team? Listen, we, did, we, we didn't expect that to happen from the inception. So when this thing happened, there was total confusion there. Some few of our men went to Osu Township, but 80% of us went to Accra post office. There was a roundabout in front of the post office those days. Any white man we saw with a car coming, we'll stop him. We won't kill him, we'll drag him, throw him away, turn the car upside down and put fire in it. And that, and that began the independence that struggle. That started the route. The, a route, a route that is more than comprehension. I'm telling you, beyond our mind, I'm telling you. For three weeks, and the population of the Gokos were extremely annoyed that our boys went to fight for you people. Instead of compensating them, 
then you massacre them. So the population also joined. Mm. They also started breaking stores and looting. It was a fearful sight. Many people around dead. Because the police pre prevented people from uh, looting the stores, they started shooting. Until Nigerian troops were brought in to quell the riot, they failed. In Ghana? Yes. It was a serious fight. And you know, when we arrived, we were discharged for disease. Some of our soldiers went home. Some went to Kumasi. Mm. Some Kofu. Mm. When they heard that they have massacred their police here, mm. ah, mm. the spark of another riot there. It became a nationwide a, a Nationwide. Thing. Everywhere. Even my, my, my aunt told me that uh, this thing, Krobo, who do not say all. They all locked their stores because it was terrible. Mm. For mm. three weeks, fire and death. Until this, this queen's father, George VI, when it subsided at the end of the three weeks, he sent a de delegation under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. Watson. They came to look into the cause why Sajajete group were, were killed. killed. That's part of the war. Mm. One thing I want to tell how she is that when there is a bell and you have not, you don't use an iron to hit a bell, would there be any sound? No. There won't be sound. The, 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 the bell will be hanging there quietly. The moment you touch it, it mm. this same thing happened. Mm. Because we were killed. Eh? So actually, they look into the hotel and see that our constitution, we have gone ahead more than the constitution. We have gone ahead more than the constitution. Mm. Mm. Then, then more ahead, more than the constitution. So the constitution was changed. That paved the way for Dr. Nkrumah, 1951. Mm. And the CPP won the election. Mm. And he formed a first cabinet in the Google. Three ex-official ministers. They were all uh, ten. Uh, the uh, Weiss, Brand, uh, uh, Amit, uh, mm. Salloway was the colonial secretary. Amity, mm. and then uh, Finance, then Branigan for judiciary. This was three white. And then uh, six uh, blacks. Bedema, Bochio, uh, Achik Ketchley, Hayford, uh, this man, uh, Tommy Hotomers, mm. Dr. An Ansakwe, and then Brahma. To add up to the, uh, the, the three, making nine. Then Kwame Nkrumah ten, being uh, 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 the leader, leader of government business. Mm -hmm. First, south of the Sahara. I'm, I'm curious, what exactly was in that petition that you wanted to give to the governor? To look, because they promised us, before our people came, you know, uh, the commander-in-chief, General Slim, later he was promoted field marshal, he promised that they will give us pension. All the benefits that the whites were enjoying, but 46 to 48, they didn't do it. So we advise ourselves. If the mountains will not go to Muhammad, Muhammad have to go to the mountains. And that was what you did. Exactly. Mm. OK. Uh, we, we know we are pressed for time, but let's look at um, this uh, um, honorary or this uh, invitation yeah. by the, the Queen. Queen of yeah. England yeah. last year, and also yeah. the award from Guba yeah. um, to actually celebrate you for what, you, what you've done for this country. Let's begin with Guba. How did it start for you? The Guba Award, mm. I was there. The British High Commissioner wrote to me mm. that I have been selected. Other veterans there, but I was selected to represent all of them in the Gokus, in Ghana. So I went and President Rawlings was asked by the British High Commission and the organizer to fly there to Britain and hand over the award to me, which he did. Okay. He was so extremely happy. Mm. Well, he knew me. Mm -hmm. So he went there and handed over this. Presented so when he, we came back to Ghana, President Rawlings invited me. I went there with officers. I was happy. Then also President Kufuado also invited me to the, uh, uh, this thing, Silver Jubilee. I went there also. And it's on my phone here. Mm. You see me and President Kufado mm. standing and then... Yeah, you were part of the program. Uh -huh, okay. You see, part of this thing. Mm. President Kufado also. 
honored you. Yes, honored me. Mm -hmm. President Kufa Adjo. So finally, the Queen also uh -huh, invited yes, you Please to the UK. Ah, President Kufa Adjo. That's nice. And me standing. Okay. Okay. You that's can show nice. it. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. President right, Kufa Adjo. Yes. yes. So finally, the Queen also the invited you. The Queen also invited me. And, and honored I went. You. Uh, I represented the 54 Commonwealth, the whole Commonwealth mm -hmm. nations. Mm -hmm. And Africa, I represented because it was continental affair. So some came from Australia, Canada, and other places, and I was the one in charge of. So all. you met the Queen in person. Then he said, mm. "Hammond, you are a hero." And how did you feel at the other point? As if I was walking on the clouds. <laughs> wow. It was warm, devil, because his grand. Son, also, mm. Prince Harry. Harry. All the 54 countries, they gathered behind me. They are representatives. They all came. And there was a garden, big garden. And every name, their names were there. Oh, they represented their country. I saw the Australia, those that came from Australia, a lady behind me, we had a chat and so forth. They all came. And Canada, they all came. And Jamaica, they also. Mm. All of them, mm. I represented all. Mm. So when the Prince Harry came out from the cathedral, he came straight to me. And what did he say? With, with one general. Then he congratulated me. Being a soldier too, who had been to Afghanistan, mm. he had interest in me so much. Then he asked me, Joseph, what, what was your, your, your division? I said, it's a second division, Royal West Africa Frontier Force. Part of uh, the 14th British Army. So I knew it. <laughs> he, he told me. Okay. Then we conversed. Because according to report, I was the one that it took so many, so long time to converse with me. Mm. When we concluded immediately, he was so happy. Then he introduced me to the wife. Mm. And the wife shook hands with him. And I said, Look, uh, 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 Megan. Uh, Madam, Ghanaians love you so much mm -hmm. because when they heard that you were going to. Mary, Mary, the, the, uh, Prince Harry. They were extremely happy. Newspapers and TV. Oh, I'm so happy. God bless you people in Ghana. <laughs> this is what she said. And so, then, the, I mean, because of that program, you dominated almost the headline of headlines, almost every newspaper everything. Then, in, in that uh, country. Uh, also, you will see all here. You see mm. the people, crowd of people, whenever I step from a car, all the, you know, the all ladies. Their husband went to the war and died there. Mm. There are medals the women put oh, okay. across. Mm. If I have a son and I die, my son will take this my medals, mm. but he will use it on the right. Okay. The old ladies who did it. So when I step from the car, hey, you are a hero. Mm -hmm. You are a hero. Mm -hmm. You are a star. You are a star. The old women, you know them. <laughs> so, ex private Hammond. So, Jesus, With what this. Jesus said, mm -hmm. it is true. Nobody regards a prophet in his hometown. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Outside, rather, they regard him. Mm -hmm. When I see sometimes how people, important people, they come around me speaking and they were so happy. I said, look, back where in Ghana, it's not like that. It's nothing. But today you are a fulfilled person. Yes. Yes. Today I'm fighting another battle. And which battle? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Battle. That's and a new project. Yes, the new project. I believe this one is more dangerous than the war. The physical war. Yeah, physical war. We went to Burma and you see your enemies, you can, you know, your strategy, mm. how to defeat him. Mm. But this war. It's invisible. So what, what, what's your aim? Or so your for, is for invisible. This so when Kenneth Moore did it in Britain, I said, why not? Oh, we were, we were all veterans. Mm. I have to do it for, for Africa too. So we started. And they were surprised. People thought that I wouldn't be able to do it at my age of 95 years. But God being so good, Jesus loves me a lot. Mm. He said, so what is the total distance? I will be distance? with you on, on, on the march. What's the, the total distance you are targeting to? to I'm walk? targeting now every day two miles. Two miles for seven day. days. For seven days. So that's 14, 14 miles. 14 miles. Okay. And how much are you hoping to generate from I, this I've project? I requested for 
to help the front line doctors and nurses, nurses and everybody involved in the sickness. Even the media. The whole the media, the whole world, mm. the whole Africa. So I've appealed to our president all over Africa mm. to contribute massively and help. Because it's not one person's sickness. It's a worldwide, worldwide. How, how much have you raised? So uh, I raised, I actually, $600,000. That's what you're targeting. They're targeting. But, but how much be, have be, you been able to generate? It's 500,000 so pounds. Okay. And we are hoping. They are contributing. Okay. We are hoping. We are hoping. Okay. But one thing, one secret, I wanted to tell you. They asked me, uh, Mr. Bediakum, they all asked me, you want to finish the 14, 14 miles? Mm. Okay, on uh, Monday. I said, well, I want to continue until I reach 30 miles, okay. which will actually land me in the Guinness Book. <laughs> you know the Guinness Book? Yeah, Guinness Book of Records. It will make me famous. All, <laughs> all over the, the world. Okay. Yes, and, and it's nothing. I will continue to do it. By doing so, more money, will, more money will be generated. generated. Yeah, yeah, it will generate more money. You know, you have to go, but uh, let me quickly ask you the, this question before we wrap up. So, after fighting in this critical war, the Second World War, what's your impression about wars in general? Good. You have asked a very intelligent question. What I'm going to ask everybody in our country here, whoever will ask you to participate in a mass trouble that will generate hostilities, problems, to result in a war or fighting. Don't go. Why? Stay in your room. The, the, all the big men, they send their children to abroad. It is you who will die. Don't go. They want to use you. They have their money. They give to you. Then they ask you to go and fight. Now we are hungry. Everybody is hungry. There's no money, there's no job. Then you go and risk your life. They send all their children, they are in Europe, Europe now, learning. Then they will ask you, if you go, then you are a lunatic. Me, I won't go. You sit quietly. To participate, to do what? Was, At all. Was that no good? It is always good to bring peace. Peace brings development to a nation. It will upset the whole structure of our advance in the country. I'm advising all the young men and the young ladies, never, never fight. Keep your peace. Peace is the best for the world. Ex-Private Ashite Hammond, um, how would you want us to remember you? Many years to come. I know you crossed 100 and, and even more. But then that day you books, come and celebrate. Sure. <laughs> I have five years to go. And more. <laughs> <laughs> five years to go there. Mm -hmm. I'm 100 years. Mm -hmm. God is a loving God. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah. If you love Jesus and Jesus loves you, His grace, He pushes you gradually, gradually. But we are all sinners. I'm not perfect. As a human being, I'm not perfect. I commit, commit errors. But because He loves me, He keeps me. Pushing me. So how should we remember you? When well, one thing I want them to do, Sajajiti Group, I want the government to honor us. Why I'm saying this, when we were 43, 44 in India, they were fighting for their independence also. 47 when they obtained their independence, Jawaharlal Nehru, their prime minister, honored all their heroes. It but but, but you, you are fortunate. Even the Queen of England has honored you. So I, that, I know, but still, this one is strictly about our fighting. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Okay. Uh, yeah, this thing, uh, this thing, uh, uh, Malaysia, President Mohammed also, those that tried there, he honored them. But when it came to the term of Ghana, look at where Sajanjete is buried, at Labadi, the cemetery. A refuse dump there. Why? The military cemetery is there. Why not send him there? Exhume. So I asked President Kufadu that I'm begging him to exhume their bodies and rebury it at the military, the, the military cemetery. Fence it. 
for posterity. Children born, when they come, they know these people lay down their life for this nation. So, the other day, I lectured at 20th February Secondary School. I told the teachers to inculcate patriotism into our youth. It's lacking now. Nobody wants to sacrifice again. Because they know such a matter that we have not been on it. They, every year they will go and, and march and so forth. For what? What are they doing? Thank you. You have a really retentive memory, and uh, I learned that you know almost the t capital of every country. Yes. I have a retentive world. memory. Let's and take some God has helped me. A lot of this, in, there's no country, sovereign country in the world that I don't know the capital. Okay, so Every let's. Every capital. So you, let's. You, you test me. Okay, okay, let's start with Ghana. Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's Accra. Accra. Nigeria. Abuja. Sierra Leone. Uh, Freetown. The Gambia. Uh, Banjo. Cameroon. Uh, uh, Cameroon. Ka uh, Cameroon. Uh -huh. uh, Cameroon. Yaoundé. Okay. Uh, Australia. Australia. Canberra. New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand. Wellington. Okay. Which other country should I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Venezuela. Venezuela. Caracas. Venezuela. <laughs> India. <laughs> India. New Delhi. Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. Islamabad. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so the program has been Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. My guest for today has been ex-private Ashite Hammond, a war, a war veteran. Uh, my name is Gifty J. Thank you so much for watching. We'll come your way, same time, God willing, next week. Until then, bye-bye. Former Gambia ruler, Mr. Yahya Jame, was born on 25th May 1965. He was a former military officer who was the leader of the Gambia from 1994 to 2017, firstly as chairman of the Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council, AFPRC, from 1994 to 1996, and then as president of the Gambia from 1996 to 2017. Mr. Jame was born in Kanle in the Gambia and is a Muslim of the Jola ethnic group. He attended Gambia High School in Banjul from 1978 to 1983 and served in the Gambian National Gendarmerie from 1984 to 1989. Mr. Jame's grandparents migrated to the Gambia from the Kasamans region of Senegal. He had a rural upbringing as part of a Muslim Jola family, primarily focused in Kanle. In April 1984, Mr. Jame joined what was then the Gambian National Gendarmerie as a private. He was part of the Special Intervention Unit from 1984 to 1986 and was an escort training instructor at the Gendarmerie Training School from 1986 to 1989. He was promoted to sergeant in April 1986 and to cadet officer in December 1987. In 1991, he served as the officer commanding the mobile gendarmerie and from 1992 to 1994 was the officer in charge of the Gambian National Army Military Police. On 1st February 1992, he had been promoted to lieutenant. Mr. Jame was the head of security detail attached to Pope John Paul II during his visit to the Gambia in February 1992. He was then commissioned as an officer of the Gambian National Army, commanding the military police from 1992 to 1994. In July 94, he led a bloodless coup d'etat that overthrew the government of Sir Dauda Jawara and installed himself as chairman of the AFPRC 
a military junta and ruled by decree until his election as president in 1996. One has to remember that Jaura has been here for 30 years. For 30 years he has been a special friend of the British authorities. He spends most of his time, time in Britain playing golf at the, at the expense of the Gambian state. He has assets in Britain and our uh, investigation into corruption have shown that most of the money stolen from the Gambian coffers are deposited in British banks. The setting up of the Crude Oil Commission has sparked of this reaction. We understand the reasons why. That they set up uh, the Nigerian government on the ECOWAS protocol has agreed to supply the Gambia, to give to the Gambia in form of financial assistance, crude oil that the Gambia can either sell if directly or refine it. But since we don't have a refinery, the crude oil has to be uh, uh, sold to some uh, sold outside to countries that have uh, refining. And we are talking of 20,000 barrels of crude oil a day from 1983 to uh, 1990. This